Valleys are really common roof details, but what happens when you have two valleys that come together at the peak or ridge of the roof? Today on the Metal Roofing Channel, we're showing you how to install that detail on a standing seam metal roof. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. Today we are continuing our standing seam metal roof installation series on Adam Mazella's house. And we are talking about what happens when you have two valleys that come together at the peak or ridge of the roof. On Adam's project, the garage comes into the main house section, creating two valleys, almost like a giant dormer. And we're gonna handle this very similarly. Today we have Matt Lane from Metal Construction Solutions and Installations back with us and he's going to be explaining this detail from start to finish. So let's go over to him and check it out. Well, we haven't peeled our valley yet as you can see because we're going to do some work on it. We've got our chalk line coming up that we're lining up with and now we're just going to trace out our valley here on the back side so we can get a pretty close cut to where this is going to end up. along the ridge line, cut a little extra. We're gonna probably just tab this over, give ourselves that extra lap, and we'll bring the other one up, tab it over a little bit, give us a little lap, and then when we're all finished, we'll actually bring the ridge cap all the way across as extra protection and bring it up under these other sheets. to be uh, working this while this piece is in the valley down here and uh, scratching this other valley up so keep it up a little high. point here intersect <clears throat> right in the middle of this line here that way we bring this one up the center line hits that center line our laps go from there once the first valley is prepped and pinned in place with a few temporary fasteners matt starts working the next valley piece by marking the location of the ridge and cutting a little extra for the tab I'm gonna put a tab on this to overlap, just extra security. our valley we've cut it back in we actually have this tabbed underneath and then we have it tabbed over for watershed same thing here this is tabbed underneath we'll caulk in here fill that in behind set it back in seal in here and set this back over and that would be your complete top to your valley uh, we'll run our sheets up tie them in with our cleats 
run our sheets in here, and then we'll carry our ridge cap across this underneath the sheets just to protect this point, because this is one of your riskier points on your roof and you really want to protect it. I'm gonna run a double course of sealant under the valley. We're gonna run it out in the valley. You wanna make sure we get that sealed up as well where this fleet ties in. With the valley set in place, Matt can remove the tack screws and prepare the laps with caulk. When we go to do these, we really want to fill the back of this with sealing. We want to back caulk some of this stuff. That way when we set it in, we know, especially of these corners, here, here, and here, are gonna have sealant. You know, by backing them up. So that way when we set it in, we know it's gonna be protected. And we're making these caulk laps like so many other things in life, cleanliness is important. So we wanna make sure when we're sealing this, things are clean. So by caulking the back first, when we set this in, we know that these points are all sealed under here. And when we press that down, you know, that's caulking's gonna seal even tighter. Because the ridge flashing is gonna cover this section of valley, Matt can put a few extra screws in the lap. Next up is installing the offset cleats. Put some butyl tape on that. Seal her down. Just doing some maintenance on the valley, keep it clean. Don't step in it. Don't sweep metal shavings down it. The valley detail is finished by running a mini roll of ice and water shield to cover the fasteners. Matt fabricates the panel that goes at the peak of the valley connection the same way as any other valley panel. But instead of measuring the entire width of the panel, he only measures to the point and then repeats for the other side. A standard one inch hem is used on this panel. We continued paneling the rest of the house, including the installation of Z closures, before Matt could finish the cap over the valley peak. This valley is like a, like a big dormer uh, coming into this roof. Very often you'd want to do your dormers first because we can tie our dormers in, run up our valley, and then we can adjust our sheet length or if we have to come up with our sheets here a little bit to accommodate our cap, we can do that. Um, what we're going to do is same thing at the other end. So I'm going to run a cap flashing across here and then up underneath these sheets. That way this is all closed in and uh, to use the term that's been used before on this channel, the uh, belt and suspenders method. We've done a good job of making sure we're sealed in here. Everything's been back caulked, everything's ice and water shielded. And now we're gonna run our cap up under here so our water is deflected once again. So this, this detail, you know, highly at risk of leaking, we're gonna protect it as much as we can. 
But like I said, you'd wanna typically do this first, this aspect, we chose to do this roof first, mainly because the amount of traffic we would have to put in this area and with the chimney, we needed to get all that flashed in and finished before we spent a lot of time up here so we didn't have these panels on having to work on our uh, completed roof. We're gonna come in with our Z. Um, I've, I've lined this out already where our lines are gonna come up. I'm actually just using my level to facilitate how deep I have to cut my marks in here. We've measured over, we've marked out where we gotta cut out here for our little water stop in the middle of our valleys. Um, it's pretty simple. We've got this one just about done, same as the other closures. We've butyl tape behind it. We've cut out for this. We just need to screw this in. And then we'll just caulk in to seal any water from getting back up inside of here. But really, this, this is just an extra step to make sure, you know, that we don't get any leak in this, in this highly suspect area. putting these screws in uh, reminded of one thing your uh, Z closures at the, top, the tops of your sheets with Sheffield typically it's a five screws across the top with their 18 inch panel but you'd want to check uh, with your manufacturer and see what they require for this detail for what it's going to take what size screws and your fastening pattern in this closure we've uh, set our cap here made sure our closures were in line uh, we're just going to make sure we're going to transfer these measurements here across so we can cut this out. We're going to tab in this up with about an inch and a half, two inch tab. And up, up, coming up underneath here, we just want to make sure our angles are right. So we've got this sitting where we need it to be and we're just transferring these measurements. Essentially, that's what we're looking for. Pretty much everything we do here is all about uh, just trying to protect everything, minimizing uh, options for water to get in and making sure everything's shedding properly and of course trying to do it in such a way that we're not nicking or scratching our material um, always stay stay out of the valleys I'm kneeling in a valley being real careful not to move my feet or I wiped it all out first to make sure that we didn't have any debris or anything in the valley that I could be uh, rubbing into the paint when we're done with this detail, the only spot we might have is a little tiny pinhole right here. We'll put another piece of metal over here that could even allow water, but if it does get through, we're really protected here underneath. Some things are easier than others. We're just trying to get our hems opened up here so we can cleat onto here. 
a little bit easier. Matt used an extra piece of the ridge cap to make a small triangle to slide over the fold. belts and suspenders uh, caulked everything in and we've put some extra caulk up here we put caulk in the back here so as we slide that in you know it, it's the back caulking we're pushing that in everything from the back side is going to be sealed on this sometimes they can be a little uh, Tricky to catch our Z's. Do our due diligence. And that, other than putting our fasteners in here and we'll have our closure in and our vented cap started at this point, is what we're looking for. Don't forget, always follow your manufacturer's detail requirements when it comes to clip spacing, fastener count, things like that. That's really important. Thanks again to Matt Lane from Metal Construction Solutions and Installations. His link is in the description down below. Make sure you subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel for more content just like this. Comment down below with any questions that you may have. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and we will catch you next time.